Alrighty, big dog. What is going on, Mr. Wix? How are you, dude? Not much. You know, we just got AJ and Mr. Luke Wix in the in the office today. Luke is interning for me this summer. How dialed is that? It's pretty dialed. It's it's tough work, honestly. <laughs> I'm just messing. But yeah, guys, we uh we just wanted to talk and kind of uh cast vision for, for where we're gonna be going this summer and just our heart behind what we're going to do. And, and, uh, I'm just really even excited to have Luke be a part of this. Cause I think he just, uh, beautifully represents, um, just the, the young adult college ministry at river house and just leadership. And so, um, I really just as a leader just wanted to one, I want to hear big time what he has to say, but also, uh, just really, really believe that he's going to just, provide and ask a lot of questions that hopefully will be helpful for uh yeah just all y'all so we're pumped so essentially today i just wanted to kind of cast vision for where we're going and what we're doing so really the heart in this podcast the heart of what we're doing and even creating this podcast sitting down and talking microphones in the the river house office is because i have this deep conviction and, and my number one goal as a leader is to uh, raise up other leaders. Um, I think there's a lot of things that are, that are going on in this world right now, um, right? The, from the coronavirus to all this racism and all these things that are being exposed. And there's just seems to be chaos, right? Like I feel like yeah. every, every phone call that I get from someone is like, help me navigate like how to respond, yeah. what to do. Like, I don't know where I'm going. And I, I feel very much the same way. Yeah. Like, like I feel very, very much the same way of like, wow. Like I feel it. there are moments where I can feel directionless. There are moments where I'm like, Oh my gosh, I feel like so much is being exposed in me. So much is being yeah. exposed in our country. So much is being exposed and I think fundamentally the reason we are, and, and I, please hear what I'm, I'm saying uh, and what I'm not saying. Like, this is not a political statement. This is just um, like, so I don't want you to hear me say like, this is because of our president or this is because of any political party. But what I'm saying is I believe that there's so much chaos um, in this world right now because of the lack of leadership um, not yeah. just politically, but in the church and, and fundamentally just yeah. us as individuals, yeah. as, as humans, right? Yeah. Like there's a lack of accountability. There's a lack of knowing how to use our voice. And, and Proverbs says, um, with a lack of vision, people perish. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and I think so, so what's happening right now is we have no vision, <laughs> And, and the reality is, is there is no political leader. There is no pastor. There is no human being <laughs> on this earth that can cast vision to get us out of this, yeah. right? There is no, there is no words of man that can be spoken yeah. that, that will get us out of this chaos. Yeah. Um, and I, and I, believe more than anything like we in this season and in this hour um as christians need to follow the voice of jesus mm -hmm. you know it's his voice that is is our leader he is our leader and i tr jesus is the only one that can redeem this thing <laughs> like yeah. like like he is like truly and, yeah. and like like truly truly like this is such a mess on so many levels, like so many levels that goes all the way from political to spiritual to personal ownership to fam how to lead a family. Like, like again, I'm not just making political statements. I'm making statements about just the general stability of what feels like humankind right right yeah. now is that fair yeah are you fair. feeling the same way yeah there's a lack of direction on so many levels yeah but there is like like we have an abundance of hurt right now yeah but a, not a way to 
cast a vision on where that hurt should lead. Like, where should we take that hurt? How should we heal? How should we reconcile? Totally. And, and we need his voice. Yeah. Like, you know, it, it, his ministry is the ministry of reconciliation. Yeah. And the beautiful thing about Jesus, and, and I, I truly believe that Second Corinthians scripture where Paul says, like, we have now been given the ministry of reconciliation. Yeah. Like our very ministry yeah. as on. Christians is to bring unity, mm-hmm. is to bring redemption, is to bring reconciliation to this world. Like yeah. that is our call. Like that is, that is our ministry. Like, so, so our words in our flesh won't create unity, but it's the ministry that he has graced (laughs) believers, me and you and everyone who calls themselves a Christian. It is the grace of God, the unmerited favor of God that he has placed on us and clothed us in, which is entitled the ministry of reconciliation. So this world right now, (laughs) like we're looking to political leaders, we're looking to bigger circumstances, but really as a Christian, like I believe that each of us behold the very grace and the very ministry to be the solution. (laughs) which is point people to Jesus. Yeah. Like, and, and this sounds so simple and elementary, but the truth is, is we so easily and, and, and often will look because we are humans, because we do have dual citizenship, because we are <laughs> citizens in heaven and citizens of earth. We're much more comfortable being citizens of this earth, which yeah. makes sense. It's material. I can hold it. I can see it. I can see with my eyes, the visual, disruption but the reality is is we are not in a battle against flesh and blood uh, but we are of powers and principalities yeah and um and so with that like just immediately wanting to speak hope like the grace on your life (laughs) the grace on my life and us taking ownership of being ministers of reconciliation like is the answer. Yeah. Like it is the answer for a healthy family. It is the answer for a healthy church. It is an answer for for healing the racial divide. Yeah. It it is the answer for the injustices of this world, right? It is. Yeah. And and I think we can I don't know about for you this is AJ's opinion. So hmm. like this is not what I feel like Jesus is speaking. Or, or anything like that, but this is my opinion, is let's just even use this racial stuff as, as an example. If there's anything that I feel like I've seen in this time is, is that over the last hundred years, there has been dramatic shifts and change in um, policy yeah. that has given more liberties, like a, an equal liberty to all of us policy wise. Yeah. Um, like, th- you know, yeah, I don't need to get into examples, but the truth is like what I feel I I'm seeing as a, as a human being on this planet is that even though all of these policies has changed, like the problem hasn't gone away. Yeah. Um, yeah. the the problem hasn't changed yeah it kind of is like like jesus died on the cross he conquered sin and death like and the, so the policy changed yep right there but do we still see sin and death sure we do like yes. we still have a lot of work a lot of ground to cover to, exactly to bridge that gap to where we don't see sin and death to where we see only the kingdom it's so good yeah. so good and so for me of what it's exposing <laughs> It is this personal thing in me where I'm like, we need the leadership of Jesus yeah. to, and we need hearts to change yeah. and we need hearts to be reconciled yeah. to their creator. Like, yeah. like I will, I am, I want policy to change. Like I want there to be equal freedoms mm-hmm. of, of course. Right. Yeah. Like, of course. And more than anything, like, hearts need to change, yeah. you know? And I don't want to go on this 
tangent right now, but I do believe it just speaks to the biggest issue of all is that we as Christians need to behold and to take on the ministry of reconciliation yeah. and take it upon ourselves and and allow the leadership of Jesus to like navigate us through these days and through these hours, like on your campuses, in your homes, like, like the ministry of Jesus is what we need. And so really this, this podcast for the summer is just going to be talking about what does it look like to become a leader? Like, what does it look like to, to be a Christ follower, to be a leader um, in this world? Because I want to, I want to create momentum. Um, I, I, I find oftentimes just being a pastor, right. And particularly I've done high school ministry and now college ministry, young adults, we can get into this pattern of, Hey, when we're in church, when we're meeting in church, when we're meeting in the NNU prayer chapel, when we're going on retreats, when we're going to revival groups, like there's momentum and I'm creating a healthy spiritual life and yeah. I'm going after it. I have people to process, but then yeah. we go off into summers or spring breaks and, yeah. and whatever it is. And, and, and this was me too when I was in college. Are you kidding me? You know? And, and we start losing it, you know? And I felt from Jesus like so passionately that he wants like th this season of you even being home in the summer or whatever you're doing this summer, like he, God's heart is to always grow you. <laughs> yeah. Like God's heart is to always grow you. And, and I, as a pastor, I guess just want to like cheer you on in that and um, really just kind of share, oh, gosh, I shoot anyone who hangs out with me for any bit of time knows that I very much don't have it all <laughs> <laughs> figured out by any means. But what I do, what I feel like I have had breakthrough in and where I do feel like Jesus is leading me, like I want to offer to you. And, um, I want to, I want to see us all just raise up as leaders. Like all of us behold the call on our life, all of us. And it's not, the pastoral call, or the workplace call. It's like the call of being a minister of reconciliation, the call of, of, of being a beloved of Jesus, the call of like being his and being his disciple in this world. Yeah. Sound good. Yeah. Cool. And so, so truly like this isn't, there's not going to be a lot of content in, in this first podcast or second one, Brett and I did one, but Fundamentally, the ministry that Jesus, Jesus was a leader here on earth when he was here, but when he was on earth, Jesus acted as a follower, right? Mm -hmm. It says that Jesus did nothing but what he saw his father doing. Mm -hmm. And so I very much believe that the best way that we can lead people and become a leader is by becoming a follower of him. Yeah. Makes sense, right? Oh, yeah. Like. Everything Jesus did, he saw his father doing. That is how we know how to, that's how Jesus knew how to navigate every circumstance that he was on earth is because yeah. he did what he saw his father doing. So what does that mean? Well, we need to develop an inner life, <laughs> right? Yeah. We need to develop a life where we are submitting to the leadership of the voice of God and becoming a follower mm. and listening to him. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think, I think something too, even before we get started on figuring out what an inner life is, uh, Jesus didn't start his ministry probably until around the age of 30. Right. Exactly. And so, and by then you saw, we see in the Bible where he goes off into the mountains or out into the wilderness or whatever to, to commune with God and to, to practice that inner life and exactly. to really connect with God. And he, we see him up on the, on the mountain and his face was glowing. Right. And, and he was, he was 30, 30 ish years old. Yep. And so what that says to me is like Jesus, son of God, savior of the world didn't start his public ministry until that time in his life. And right. all that time before was him growing, cultivating and cultivating his inner life. And, and connecting with the father and learning how to learning how to pray. He learned how to pray before he could teach people to learn how to exactly. pray. And it just like 
it encourages me because a lot of times I get my, I get so hard on myself. Like I'm not growing as fast as I mm. want to be. Or I'm not where I think I should be, but it's, it's baby steps. I have to constantly remind myself that it's baby steps yeah. and like God's going to take me where God's going to take me. I just need to submit and, and start to be getting myself in tune with the grace so good. and in tune with, with where I'm being led. Yeah. Not on my clock, but on God's. So good, dude. So good. And and part of becoming a leader, right, is like <laughs> embracing the whole process. Yeah. You know. God loves and, the process. Yeah, it's a <laughs> lot of process. <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, shoot, dude. You look at Jesus, and he was what? A little, a little kid? And... Mary and Joseph were like, where the heck is this dude? Yeah. Like, where's my kid? You know? <laughs> and he was in the temple. Yeah. He, from a young age, was submitting himself oh, yeah. to the leadership of, of his father. And his, Mary goes up to him and goes, yo, dude, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing, Jesus? Like, yeah. you're my child. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, oh, well, mom, uh, don't you know I'm about my father's business? <laughs> Yeah, you know, and it just shows like one, like this is a, even when we start talking about the inner life, like this is a process. Yeah. Uh, we're not even going to get into like the inner life today. Um, but what we see fundamentally throughout the life and ministry of Jesus is what empowered him as a leader was his willingness to get away and be alone with his leader. Yeah. <laughs> and even in, in Acts 2 with Paul, right after his conversion on the Damascus Road, like we see this little blip where it's like, oh, and then he went away for three years. Right. And then he came back. It's like, well, what, what was he doing for three years? Exactly. And it's like, it's a process. He didn't go straight from the Damascus Road to walking down the street with his handkerchief being handed out and healing totally. people. There was so much more that went into it. So much more. And... The inner life is filled with seasons of wilderness. Yeah. It's filled with seasons of silence. Yeah. It's filled with seasons of abundance and of revelation. Double it, Lord. Right? It's <laughs> it's it's totally not this structured like I, I want to be very clear and for those of you who know me well, no. <laughs> <laughs> That like what you're not going to get is a five step plan on how to (laughs) develop an inner life. (laughs) Like that's just not what you're going to get because that's not what we see in the Bible. Like part of the inner life is just sitting and just waiting Waiting. and just read like, yeah, shoot, we're about to go on some tangents, but (laughs) like just that is what we're going for that is what we're pressing on towards is like developing this life style and pattern of what I do is first and foremost, get alone with God. Yeah. Like I need his leadership Yeah. to be a Christian literally means to be a little Christ. Yeah. It means to be a little follower, to be a witness, you know, acts one, you will be filled with power and to be my witness in all Judea, Samaria and to the rest of the world, whatever yeah. the heck it says. <clears throat> and <laughs> like that is <laughs> again, like our call, our anointing is to be his witness and to be his witness implies what? That you need to see him. Yeah. <laughs> that you need to know him. Yeah. That you need to know what he thinks about racial issues. That you need to know what he thinks about family structure. That you need to know what he thinks about how you spend your money. Like, like he wants to, to he, one, he wants to heal your heart first and foremost so that you can, like, hear him, know his heart, and then express it to the world around you. And so I'm, I'm really, really, really looking forward um, to just going on this, this journey of discussing like, what is the inner life? And, and essentially, I mean, to answer that question really quick, um, it's a life. The inner life is developing a life where the Holy spirit is leading you in everything that you do. Yeah. It's the abiding place. Mm-hmm. It's what Jesus speaks about in John chapter 15. It's 
it is, and, and this probably isn't news for any of you, but uh, it can't be echoed enough. Like Jesus said, abide in me, remain in me. That is the inner life. Yeah. Like abiding in him, remaining in him. And I tell you these things so that your joy may overflow. Like he wants to develop you. He wants you to develop an inner life. He wants you to uh, get alone with him, to be with him, to remain in him. Um, so that your joy may overflow and so that you may be filled with the abundance, the abundance, the abundance of God. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, man. And like, and I, and I can just say from my own personal experience and then I'll, I'll ask Luke the same questions. Um, but the times that I am most abiding and remaining in him in my inner life and in my communion is probably a good way of saying it with Jesus is strongest is usually when I'm going slower. It's usually when I'm not striving. Well, it's always when I'm not striving <laughs> and it's, it is those moments where I'm just so aware with him and I see his kingdom come Yeah, like, like I really do. It's what it's in those moments when divine appointments happen. Shoot. We had one the other day, you yeah. know, like, and I'm right now in a season where like, I feel like my inner life is really strong and it's crazy guys. Like you just start seeing God show up and, and he's always on the move and he's always trying to speak and he's always trying to lead you. And he's always trying to get you to see divine appointments, but it isn't until we prioritize yeah. the abiding yeah. place, the remaining in him that we are even like, aware of all the things that he wants to do in our lives and mm -hmm. all the things that he is doing. And, and like one of my biggest fears, and I think it's okay to say fears is like, I don't want to get to heaven someday and be like, there was this opportunity. There was this, there was this, there was this, there was this. And, mm. and not out of a striving mindset at all, yeah. but out of a mindset of like, I want to behold the gift of God that he offers us yeah. and express it to the world around me. Like more than anything, like I have this holy fear. Like I want to even have a more holy fear in me that says like, I want to accomplish your will on this earth. Like I want to see your kingdom come. And I fundamentally believe that will only happen if I learn, if we learn together how to remain and abide and stay in him. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? How have you, would you say that you like can relate to even just that statement of when that abiding place is, you just, you just start to see him more. Yeah. I think, I mean, obviously it changes with whatever season you're in, but I think there's like, we've all experienced or, I pray that we all experience that season where it's just like so easy yeah. to just get down with God and like so easy to, to connect. Yeah. And, um, what I've kind of found is like that, like that season, God doesn't keep us in that season the whole time. Um, and that's a good thing because mm. I mean, we, there's a lot more strength we can find in so other good. seasons. And, um, honestly, like the times when I'm, when I feel like my inner life is the strongest really recently has been times where it's just been like thing after thing after thing <laughs> just piles up on me. Yep. And there's like, if I, w if it wasn't for God, it wasn't for that unmerited favor, that grace of being able to n trust God, mm -hmm. like I would, I would drown in, yeah. in what is happening. And like, I won't go into details because, yeah. but like there's been some times in my life recently where it's just been like, okay, another thing, another yeah. thing. And I found myself just looking to God in those times and being like, okay, hmm. what are you going to do now? Like what? Yeah. I know that you're good. And I know if it's not the end, it's, if it's not good, it's not the end. So good. And so I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to wait for, for that goodness or for you to give, restore my hope or restore my, um, my joy. So good, bro. But yeah, like, and I see it in the Bible as well. Like 
Jesus was led in the wilderness for 40 days. Like mm-hmm. all these people, yep. all these people that we see doing big things, like <laughs> are, <laughs> I mean, was it Ezekiel who laid three three years, three years. naked eating food? Po- food off <laughs> poop. Food that was cooked on <laughs> dung. Like... <laughs> The like, call of a Christian. The call of a prophet. You say you want to be a prophet, but <laughs> you're not willing to lay three years naked in the town square. <laughs> like, I, and all that, like, that's funny to say, but yeah, all that to say, like, yeah, it's the inner life is a challenging thing. And yes, it's it is. the, the, the road of a Christian is yeah. the sold out Christian is, it's hard. Is, is a hard thing to do, but it's so worth it every time. Yeah. And, Wow. Even through that wilderness, through that wilderness, we get that perseverance, that faith, yeah. and we're able to connect more with God. And like, so it makes good. the easier time, like it makes the, I mean, not the easier times, I'm not going to say that, but like the times where we, we feel easier, like where there's less things pressing us down, yeah. it makes those times more fruitful. So good. Because when we walk in the wilderness for 40 days, we can walk in abundance exactly <laughs> for the next season. And it's, yeah, and and this, in lies what Luke just said, um, and lies the very reason, I think, uh, a lot of people don't make it. Yeah, it's because a lot of the times this journey of the inner life is hard. Yeah, uh, it's not. It's 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 not easy. Um. But consider it a pure joy, my brothers, when you face trials of many kinds. Come on. For the testing of your faith develops perseverance. And I fundamentally, like, we need to be strong. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and what, <laughs> this will probably be the next podcast, but striving and trying to become strong the more I'm walking this life, I learn is impossible. Yeah. <laughs> and that's when we burn out yeah, and that's that. when we give up and that's when we stop. And that's how come so many people abandon their post yeah. as a, being ministers of reconciliation. Burnout. Yeah. But, but I want to speak hope into this that says the inner life is a journey of progressive weakness. Mm. <laughs> journey into weakness it's a journey in this progressive journey of becoming more and more dead to yourself dependent and more and more dependent and is it hard yes (laughs) it's hard but when i'm weak he's strong yeah and so this inner life that we're going to be talking about is will all be around and all point to the journey into we humbling ourselves under the mighty hand of God, entering into this progressive weakness. And as we enter into progressive weakness, this journey of weakness that will always be, yeah, we will learn to behold what true abundance is. It's because we're dying yeah. and he's being resurrected in us. And I think a lot of Christians live with not a resurrected Jesus, yeah. you know, it's the journey into becoming soft. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Sam cook just has <laughs> this dialed, <laughs> um, but, but really, you know, and, and so it's beautiful, right? Like yeah. the abiding places when he prunes us and it's hard. But like it's in, right? It's in the same scripture in John 15. Remain in me, abide in me. You will be pruned, yeah. which means you will literally, things in you will be cut off. Cut off. <laughs> but I tell you these things so that your joy may overflow. Yeah. <laughs> this whole thing's a paradox, people. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. so, and so just embrace it. Mm-hmm. Get ready for it. We're going to talk about a lot of fun conversations. We will talk about what does it look like to hear God's voice? How do we learn to pray the, the prayers of Jesus? We're going to talk about 
what does it look like um, becoming fully alive and the full and and dwelling of God? We'll talk about silence and solitude. We'll talk about becoming a prophetic voice, embracing suffering. What well, we're gonna talk about it all. Yeah, I hope. Um, <laughs> and also, if you have any questions and like things that you want us to talk about, uh, feel free to email me. Uh, it's aj at riverhouseministries.com. And uh, if I don't, if we don't talk about it on a podcast, I promise I'll reach out to you and talk about it. Um, so we love you. Yep. We're praying for you. Yep. And uh, just hope that you get wrecked, <laughs> wrecked, 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 wrecked this week. Um, so Jesus, we just pray for each person listening to this, this podcast. We just speak um, leadership over them. We speak grace over them and we just say yes to becoming ministers of reconciliation. Yes to bringing the dead, dry, weak things in this world back into yourselves. May you find us as a holy people. May you find us as a people who embrace, embrace the inner life, embrace developing a life with you and, and just truly humble ourselves under your mighty hand. So we love you. We praise you and honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Alrighty, party people. Talk to you later.